Last night, we talked about how the fifth generation of wireless technology, or 5G, as it's being rolled out worldwide without safety testing. Let me say that again, without safety testing. And how we've got scientists and doctors and environmental organizers saying, stop this. Because in terms of the effects of wireless radiation, the science is in. Wireless radiation can lead to cancerous heart tumors, uh, brain tumors, uh, DNA damage. Wireless radiation is linked to infertility, to autism, Alzheimer's, and more. And guess what? All the effects that I just listed, those are some of the effects that are known according to the technology that's being seen today. So what happens when we roll out the next technology, 5G? How much more powerful is 5G? How much more troublesome might it be? Well, we bring in now our NRS correspondent, Michelle Greenstein, who's been uh, working on this. I would imagine if those things are all potential, uh, potentially dangerous now, 5G can only, what, add to it, right? It could be more uh, dangerous, right? Yeah, that's exactly the question to be asking because it's not just faster internet. Right now with 4G and LTE, which is a part of that, we have about a 50 millisecond delay. 5G is going to bring us about a one millisecond delay. So you and I are not going to notice that technological difference, right? But what this means is that machines will be communicating with, e with each other quite seamlessly. And 5G is going to be the platform, it's going to be the infrastructure for all of this smart grid technology, the internet of things, right? We're going to be, have integrated smart homes with all of our devices connected. That means you can press a touch screen on your refrigerator and order more coffee or set the mood lighting or start playing some music. And we're told that things like smart driving cars are going to lead to less accidents or that smart meters are going to give utilities and customers more data, more information so we can avoid blackouts and things like that. But of course, all this more data from a health perspective, means more disease because these devices are constantly pulsing with radiation. Pulsing with radiation. I would think that if someone had come and said, we are going to develop this omnipresent system that's going to surround us with this stuff, that's going to be pulsing uh, radiation everywhere, somewhere along the line, somebody would have asked, well, hold on a minute. Let's run this by the experts first and make sure we're all going to be safe. So Surely. how do we get to this point? Well, I think the really important question to ask is how can we protect ourselves against this wireless radiation? Yeah. I actually spoke to Cece Doucette. She's the founder of an international nonprofit called Wireless Education. And I asked her what we can do to protect ourselves. Let's see what she said. Okay. Assess what you have in your own possession that you can control. For example, in my home, we have completely hardwired all of our technology. My computers run a lot faster. They're certainly more safe because we don't have any radio frequency exposures. A lot of our technology appears to be hardwired, but you have to take it one step further and also go into your settings and turn off all the antennas. You can buy a little adapter to hardwire most of your cell phones, and that just means plug it into your router using an ethernet cable, and then just put a little adapter on that will allow you to plug directly into your device. But plugging it in does not automatically disable those antennas. So you just simply go into settings, identify all the antennas. One cell phone may have five or six separate antennas. There could be one for cellular, one for data, one for Bluetooth, one for Wi-Fi, one for locator, and by now the industry is using us as their network, so there could be an additional one for a hotspot. Turn them all off and hit save and you will have nice safe technology. Hmm. So she's speaking from a personal perspective, right? We should make sure that as many of our de devices as possible should be hardwired. But the issue with 5G is that it will be impossible to walk outside without exposing yourself to this radiation because right. these small cell towers are going to be everywhere. Now, Rick, you asked how we got here. We got here because the FCC the organization that is supposedly supposed mm. to be regulating the wireless industry has been completely captured by the wireless industry itself. Mm -hmm. We know that the so-called public servants or our representatives and all these government entities have really been captured by the wireless industry. And that's what happens with, when any industry gets so big that it can afford to use a government body. Enamored? and other ways, I imagine, as well. Right. They're also enamored because the industry has been successful in hiding the health risks. By the way, uh, we're down to 30 seconds on this segment, but I just wanted to ask, we should maybe...
Maybe we should do a segment on the loss of privacy, the uh, surveillance issue regarding Absolutely. this. Absolutely. We... 5G means constant surveillance with the ultimate goal being a network of things with every single thing on the planet connected to this network. And that's why you're seeing things like the Washington's technological war on China because China is way ahead of us in terms of 5G. And of course, the U.S. wants their hands on that surveillance infrastructure. So it sounds like I sold you into doing another segment on this. Oh, no. Now I have to do that. <laughs> Michelle Greenstein, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>